Okay guys, so welcome to our channel, Wrong Basics. So this time, we will learn about the properties of an inverse of a one-to-one -one function. Okay? So we will utilize these properties for us to prove the inverse and if a function has an inverse or not. Okay, so given that f of x is a one-to-one -one function and its inverse denoted by this one, the inverse of f of x, then first property, the inverse of the inverse of the inverse of f of x is f of x, of course, such as this one. So illustrating, we have okay. So it is said in property number one that the inverse, the inverse of the inverse of f is f. Okay, the inverse of f of x is this one, and the inverse of this one is this one. So I guess we are clear on property number one. Then we have property number two, the composition of the inverse of a function to its function, or this one, equals x for all x in the domain of the inverse of f. Okay, again, the composition, this one, we have the composition of functions between the f and its inverse and another one is the composition of the function to its inverse equals to x for all x in the domain of f so we will use these two properties in checking whether example this function and this function are inverse okay so again a function has an inverse if and only if it is one to one, or in other uh, other way of understanding it, a one to one function has an inverse. Then we have to remember this one: absolute value function and functions with even degrees or degree is or are not one to one functions. So example. Uh, an absolute value function is always in this form. Okay, so in some cases you have plus the constant and some other uh, we have constant on the inside of your absolute value function. So when you see this on a function, automatically this function is not one to one. If we have illustrated it in your Cartesian plane, the absolute value function always on this graph. You have to add some, uh, what they call some constant. It's either will be going down or going up. But this is the standard form of the absolute value function. Okay, and another one are the value uh, the, are the functions with even degrees, such as quadratic function. So any other terms. Uh, example plus 2x plus 1 okay so the highest exponent is 2 so this function is in the quadratic degree or the exponent is even so even or multiples of 2 For example we have x raised to 4 example y is equal to x raised to 10 so when the exponent of the function is even automatically that function is not one to one and of course your absolute value function Okay, so I guess we are clear on that. That will remind us in solving your one-to-one -one function and the inverse of certain function. So going to our going back to our properties, example we have functions f of x and n of x. So if I will ask you, is f of x an inverse of n of x? Or can we say that is n of x and inverse of f. So, uh, we can answer the question using these two properties. So, let us try this property, the second property. Okay, the, the inverse. Um, or let us try the first property. So, we will be verifying if uh, n of x is an inverse of f of x. So the inverse of n 
should be f of x. So let us try to solve for the inverse of n of x. So we will be solving for the inverse of n of x. Okay, so first step is to make your n of x equal to y. Then y is equal to x minus 1 over 3. Then all the x will become y and all the y will become x. Okay, so we have that one. Then cross multiply, we have 3x minus, sorry, 3x equals to y minus 1. Then write it in y form again. So y is equals to 3x minus 1. Uh, sorry, this is not minus 1. This is plus 1 because you have to transfer plus 1 on the other side. That will become 3x plus 1. Or we can say that the inverse of n of x is equal to 3x plus 1. So that is property number 1. That the inverse of the inverse of the function will go back to the original function. Okay? Let us try to prove property number 2. So I guess we are clear on property number 1. Okay, property number 2. Uh, we will be solving the the composition of f f composed of its inverse should be equal to x. So we will be using the f function, f of x. So f of x is equal to 3x plus 1. Where instead of x, we will be using x is equal to the inverse of your f. So the inverse of your f is, okay, we will be using f of x. So this one, instead of x, we will be, uh, we will input a function and that is the inverse of your f. Okay, so we have 3, then we have x, so x will be substituted by this one, x minus 1 over 3, copy plus 1. Okay, so I guess we are clear. We are using your function f of x instead of x as our input. We will substitute n of x or this one by property. Uh, your inverse is n of x. Okay, I will that one. Okay, so this is your property number two. So if we will do the composition of function between your f and n of x, or f composed of n of x, uh, the answer must be x. The answer must be x for us to prove that n of x is the inverse of f of x. Okay, so let us continue. So, it's either you will divide first or you will... Uh, you will have to multiply it by distribution property. So to make it easy, 3 divided by 3. Okay, it's just like mm, 2 times mm, example 5, this one, 5 over 2 plus 1. Just like that. So if you can multiply 2 times 5, we have 10 divided by 2 plus 1. So 10 divided by 2 is 5 plus 1. Or easily just divide. The remaining is 5 plus 1. So that's the concept behind. So let us cancel 3. The remaining will be x minus 1 plus 1. Okay? So copying f, then compose of n of x is minus 1 plus 1 cancel to the remaining x. So property number two verifies that n of x is the inverse of f of x. Okay? Let's go to property number three. So property number three states that this one, f, or the inverse of f, composed of f of x is the original function answer must also be x. Okay? So the inverse or our inverse is this one. So we will be using n of x 
equals to x minus 1 over 3. And x is equal to f of x, which is 3x plus 1. Or we will be using this n of x. Or we will follow this one for us to check whether n of x is the inverse of f of x. So let's try. So we will be using uh, n of x. So instead of f of x, okay, so that is f of x, so we can uh, write it on other form. Then we have x is equal to f of x, or f of x is 3x plus 1. Okay, so where did we get this? 3x plus 1 minus 1. Substitute on n of x, or this one, over 3. Then simplifying, we have 3x plus 1 minus 1 over 3 is equal to inverse of the function composed of its function. So we have plus 1 minus 1. The remaining will be 3x over 3. Okay? So I guess we are clear. Okay, continuing. 3 divided by 3, the remaining is x. So we have proven that uh, the inverse of a function composed of f of x or its function or, or its original function will become x. So property number 3 proves that n of x is the inverse of f of x. Okay? So let's go to another example. For our next example, we will be proving if g of x is the inverse of h of x or h of x is the inverse of g of x. Okay, so let us use the first property. So this is uh, h of x. Let us get the inverse of h of x. So h of x is equal to y. Then, change your h of x into y form. We have the cube, the cube root of x plus 2. Then, all the y will become x, and all the x will become y, and copy everything. Okay? For us to eliminate this cube root, of course, we will use the inverse operation of cubing and extracting roots so we will raise it to the exponent 3 or we will cube your whole equation because you have raised this quantity to 3 of course you will raise this quantity 3 for us to maintain the balance on both sides of your equation so we have x cube then we have y plus Two. Isolate y, we have x cubed minus 2. So plus 2 will be transferred, it will become minus 2. So in writing it proper way, we have y is equal to x cubed minus 2. So we have to remember that this y equals to x cubed minus 2 is the answer that we have to solve when we are getting the inverse of h of x. And if you can see, the inverse of h of x is 1 is equals to g of x. So of course, using property number 1, we have proven that h of x is the inverse of g of x. Let's go to property number 2. Okay, property number 2, the function f, Compose of its inverse is equal to x. So we are not just using f of x as a function, but we have also g of x and h of x. Okay? So we have this g composed of its inverse. The inverse is h of x should be equal to x. Okay? So let us prove that. So your g function is your g function is x cubed minus 2. 
So instead of writing x, we will be using your h function. That one. So I guess we are clear on that. Then minus 2. So we have to see to it that the answer is x. Then continuing. Cubing. The cube root is equals to x plus 2 minus 2 equals to g of h of x. So minus 2, uh, plus 2 minus 2 is 0. So we have x. So therefore, g of h of x is equal to x. So we have proven that h of x is an inverse of g of x using property number 2. So let's go now to property number 3. So property number 3 states that the composition of uh, the inverse of a function composed of the original function is also equal to x. So the inverse of our function is h of x. So h composed of g of x. So we will be using the function h. And your function h is the cube root of x. So we will not be using uh, writing x because it is composed of g. So instead of x, this one we will be writing x cubed minus 2. So PEMDAS, parenthesis, there's no operation to be simplified. So we have to get out of your parenthesis. Okay, so we have x cubed minus 2 plus 2. So minus 2 and plus 2 is 0. So we have the remaining. The remaining is x cubed. The cube root of x cubed is equal to h of g of x. Then simplifying. So we have the h of g of x is equal to x. So we have proven using property number 3 that h of x is the inverse of g of x. So by using our properties, uh, we can prove and verify whether these two functions are inverse to each other. If h of x is an inverse of g, or we can say that g is an inverse of h. Okay? So I guess you've learned something on this video. Thank you and stay safe.